Did you want me to do that today? I'm not sure. Um, what? Are you going to take care of that right now? Are you going to take care of me tonight? Yeah, I will. Yes, yes. Okay. All right, so since Bill is remote, I'll be the chair tonight. So today is Monday, July 22nd, 2024 at 7 p.m. The Town of Brookfield, this is the Conservation Commission. Uh, first on the agenda is to reorganize the board. So I'm going to make a motion to make Bill Meeker chair of the Conservation Commission. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Discussion, or I should say discussion first, and then Nine. roll call. All right. Um, any thoughts for vice chair? Sarah. Sarah, you? <laughs> Second. Is that a motion? <laughs> yes. I make a motion that Sarah be the, the vice, the VP. Right. Discussion. Nine. Make a great one. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So, number three, update on meeting with KQ Law and town administrator. Bill, do you want me to lead this or do you want to lead the conversation? Do you want me to lead? Um, yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead, because I don't have, um... So, basically, after we had the executive session, I met with KP Law, um, and Bill was there, and our former chair, Chris Kelleher, was there. We kind of just went over the bylaw in general. Um, we had concerns, or I had concerns, about the 14-day public hearing incident and the five-day bylaw situation. Um, KP advised us that it is a five-day public hearing notice. It is not a 14-day public hearing notice. Um, we kind of just went into detail about the bylaw and KP kind of suggested that we eventually look at other towns and suggest looking to redo the bylaw um, that would require an annual town meeting and that kind of sort. I kind of went into detail about, you know, we don't have an agent, and so things like an enforcement order or a violation letter or making sure that we have the plan requirements is kind of the agent's job, whereas we don't have an agent, so it kind of relies on us. So I kind of asked KP and so did Chris and so did Bill, like, what is our role? Like, do are we supposed to be vetting the applicants? I know that was kind of Molasses Hill the group's concern about the applicant in question and whether or not that had something to do with our end on the on the application. Um, KP said that we should be looking into it. Um, we should be looking into whether they have what they're certain they are a legit company, but that should not. I guess I'm looking for that at the end of the day does not matter voting wise and application wise obviously if they're not in order we should go through the process and make sure that they do correct their i guess some of them were concerned about that they're a dissolved company so before we take the application we should make sure that they become a legit company again okay. and do the correct filings and then take the application and go through the public hearing and that aspect of it but we should not just cut them off because they're a dissolved company in that sense. Okay. I brought up an enforcement order. I kind of looked into an enforcement order. I had some concerns um, about who can give an enforcement order, how does the enforcement order work, just because, yeah, we don't have an agent, usually the agent would be giving the enforcement order. So KP advised us that any one member on the Conservation Commission can give a enforcement order, but it does need to be ratified at a meeting, so meaning the rest of the commission needs to back it up at the meeting, that's why it's on the agenda tonight, and we'll okay. go into that in a little bit more of detail when we get there. Okay. So I kind of came up with the idea, and I'm kind of going into number nine, too, of discussion of implementing different policies. Now that we don't have an agent I kind of came up with an idea with Ron that, you know, other towns have like a tree policy, they have plan requirement policies, they have policies in place to kind of make it easier for the board so it's not on the board. So that way they have a checklist, the applicant has a checklist to follow, we have our own checklist. So 
So maybe I, my thought was if we implement those, then it'd be easy on our end and it'd be easier kind of on their end. Okay. I don't want to just throw like 17 you know, or 18 different policies at us. <laughs> so I figured we could just go, you know, like one or two at a time and just kind of talk about them. I did adapt or get them from other towns. So it's not like something I just created. And But I think it would help us and it would help the applicant and kind of just guide us on how we should lead a meeting and how a meeting should go and how the process should go. So that way there's more flow. We know the process and they know the process and we have something to rely on saying that this is this is ours. Like this is our policy, this okay. is what we require. So that was like the gist basically of the KP meeting. Bill, do you have anything else? No, I, I think that that's kind of uh, a very good segue. I think what we look at now is, you know, kind of setting a new kind of precedent going forward and trying to be, um, you know, a, a little bit more black and white and, and have things in writing, um, you know, different policies. I think that's a, that, that was kind of the idea that I came out of there. I think they're kind of echoing what you just said, Sarah. Uh, really, that, that was more than anything. And I think, um, you know, we, we probably could be doing a little bit more due diligence on vetting, um, but we need to, again, look at that a little bit further and just see exactly who is ultimately responsible for that and what liability lies on us if we don't get that done. That's, that's right. Yeah, so I'll, I'll look into the bylaw, too, so that kind of goes into the bylaw discussion, too, which I'll address. If we want to keep the bylaw, not keep the bylaw, if we do want to keep it, there's other towns obviously that have a bylaw, so we can look into that more, and I'll kind of go into that real quick when we talk about the discussion. But yeah, the, 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 the question I do have about bylaws, though, is really, do, so I know other towns have wetlands, you know, specific bylaws, um, which are not incorporated into their town bylaws. And what, what the one question I didn't get resolved when that is, are they official bylaws per se, or do we actually have to have something separate? Because I think uh, what Chris was saying is that we needed it to be policy. It could only be policies. It couldn't actually be a bylaw. I said, I don't really think it matters exactly what it is, but I mean, what we call it. But I think that's kind of like the idea that other towns are doing right now. I think that, that's a good example to follow. Yeah, especially like, so like Sturbridge, I know they have an actual bylaw, so the town like adopted it, like a two-thirds vote at an annual town meeting. So they're, even though like the Wetlands Protection Act only has a 100-foot buffer zone, but they have a 200-foot buffer zone. So if you're going into the 200-foot buffer zone, it triggers an NOI. Whereas if you're yeah. in Brookfield and you're in the 100, within that 100 to 200 feet, you're not getting triggered for an NOI. You're not getting triggered for anything. So Yeah, and... and that, that's, a, that's a great point um, that you brought up right there because I think that we really do need to maybe have some more education around that about, you know, what we want to allow within that buffer zone versus, you know, 50 foot versus 100 foot because I think there's been a misunderstanding in the past um, about what, what we're supposed to be, you know, protecting what resource, how, how close the resources are we allowing work to be done versus what the DEP and the Wetlands Protection Act say. Yeah, exactly. um, yeah, like even so Spencer, like I look into their bylaw, they, so they have a 20 foot no touch buffer zone. So you can't even go within 25 feet of the wet. Yeah. So even if you file an NOI, you still have to ask for a waiver. So, I mean, it's something that we can look into. Obviously, if we do a bylaw situation, we're going to have to go into the annual town meeting. But honestly, it's not till June. So we have some time. So. Yeah, I mean, if that's what we want to do, I think that I'll do some of the work and look at other towns and kind of go from there and see what if it's something that we want to kind of look into and discuss further. Seems like a positive step forward. Yeah. yeah. Clear up a lot of yep. yeah. issues. Yeah, yeah. So I'm all set with KP discussion, if you are, Bill, and if you two are. I'm, so I think that yeah, I'm good. That answers all the questions that we had. Okay, all right. I don't think anyone's here for a long hill, so I'm going to skip over it. So then I'm going to go into the 6 Molasses Hill RDA project. Okay, so I'm going to be honest, and I kind of brought up some questions after Miss Reynolds was here and kind of 
fi filed her open meeting law complaint. I kind of went back and looked at the project a little bit and kind of looked at the RDA and the whole situation. So, and it's also, I guess, going to go into six, which is Molasses Hill Enforcement Order. So after looking at the RDA, there was no plan that he gave. And I have the RDA with me, but he provided the Conservation Commission with a delineation, and I'm not questioning Marianne DePinto's delineation yet, but he gave us no site plan. And I'm not asking, and I'm not saying that he needed to get an engineered site plan or anything. He could have just printed out a picture from GIS or Google Earth and drew a driveway on it and kind of showed where the driveway was. But after looking at into the RDA, there was nothing for us to go back on and say whether he went to plan. So I kind of talked to the DEP, or not kind of, I did talk to the DEP and I suggested that I would do the enforcement order. So Becky from the DEP, she helped me with the enforcement order and the language about the enforcement order. So I did issue him an enforcement order. I do have a copy of it if you'd like to see it. On the enforcement order, I, hold on Bill. I said that, I said I wanted him to place a silt fence and straw wattles between work areas and wetland resource areas, uh, provide written confirmation of content to comply, to comply within five business days of this order, a required site inspection within 14 days, an as-built plan with a topographic view within, with buffer zones of unpermitted work within 30 days, and I asked him to attend the next Conservation Commission meeting. Um, the reason why is because before he put up the fence, I don't know if you've driven by, but there's a fence up there currently in front of the property. Before he put up the fence, there was, I don't know if you remember the slope in the back, but he went and cut some trees down in the slope. So I am questioning whether or not the work of the slope is in a wetland or in a buffer zone. Okay. And I don't have an approved plan or we don't have an approved plan to base it off of is if he is in a buffer zone or if he's in a wetland and if he was approved to do the work there. Okay. So my goal is to make sure that we are protecting the wetlands and that we are doing our duty as Conservation Commission. So that is what I did. I issued him the enforcement order. The applicant did not reply. And are they here tonight or no? no? He is not here tonight. Okay. The applicant did not comply with or even responding to my enforcement order. I know he got it because I got the green card receipt. Okay. He did not uh, call me or text me and ask me to do a site walk. He didn't get in touch with the commission to do a site walk within the 14 days. So my concern and my comment is going to be that if you are in the best interest of the town, and I don't care what it is, I don't care if it's a single family home, I don't care what is going there, we currently, according to this RDA, we have no idea what is going there. If the Conservation Commission or the Planning Board or any town board questions the work that you were doing as a contractor or as a developer, in my eyes, the developer would want to comply with the town, yes. even if the town is wrong. And side note, I did ask KP that if I was wrong in my enforcement order, could the applicant come back and sue the town of Brookfield? And KP said, yes, but the town was in, I was in the best interest of the town. So we would not be liable if the enforcement order does happen to be wrong. So I just want to make that note too. Good. But I gave the enforcement order because I would like to see an as-built plan. I would like to see the right steps taken so that way we can say that we did our duty as a board 
and we can say that the applicant did his duty as a board. And I'm going to be very blunt and honest that responding to my enforcement order kind of says that he's not. So. So. So we have that 14 day period. Uh, what day was the enforcement order issued again? So I issued it July. So it's written July 1st, but I sent it out the next business day. So that's July 2nd. He got it green card receipt and signed back to me July 3rd. So he, it was like, so he responded and got the green card the next day. So he had plenty of time within the five days and he still hasn't responded. So, and he had 14 so, days to do a sidewalk and he has did not. We tried. All right, so I've texted him also making that known. I've texted him twice. I've gotten no response. I texted him Wednesday, told him the meeting was canceled and I texted him Saturday and told him that there was a meeting tonight. So, <laughs> I don't really know what the steps are going to be going forward, but seems like you've done all the right things. Sir. Yeah, I just want to make sure right, that so the town. With, with that in mind, do we do a stop work order then? Since he's not responsive, we don't know what's going on, or do we decide to fine, or what? What's the next step here? I don't know. So technically, the enforcement order is above a work order, so it's a DEP. It's a W. It's a WPA form, so it's a, or a WP form, so it's from the DEP. So I'm. I asked Ron, kind of like, what our next steps would be now that he did not comply, and so I believe Ron is trying to find that out. I was hoping the applicant would be here tonight so that we could have the conversation. Obviously, that's not going to happen. So. I don't know. My concern is that I'm not really sure what's going to happen going forward. And if he is continuing to do work, I have no idea. If you drive by, you can't see what's going on over the fence. And the fence went in after I gave the enforcement order. So I feel like that's even more of a non-compliant saying that he's going to be non-compliant because why would you receive my enforcement order saying that I want you to stop doing the work and then put up a fence. All right. Um, so we don't have um, a, an agent for the DEP right now, right? No, um, not we're... currently. So the agent that I'm working with is looking into it. So I guess my biggest action would be making sure that everyone's on board and is willing to sign the enforcement order just so that we can have it ratified and we can have everyone's signature and not just mine. <laughs> I think we are. Yep. And yeah, I don't really know what's going to happen going forward. And I don't know if he's done work. I don't, like I said, I, there's effects. I, I don't know. There is molasses Hill right. people tonight. So the so first step, um, so I'll motion to, uh, to ratify the enforcement order as written. Second. All right, so he has the original. Obviously, he didn't come, so I have a copy. So I'm just gonna have everybody sign a copy. Do they vote? Oh, little discussion. discussion. All in favor? Um, I think that this is. I think we should sign it. I think we should. Sign yep. It. Okay. I'm in favor. Okay. All right. Like I said, I'm not against the project. I just want to make sure that everything is on the up and up. Yeah, everything is legit and. That we can say that we did our duty and he can say he did his duty. All right. Um, and we can leave it with uh, Mike Siri. And uh, when I get back, I'll sign off for that. All right. I may regret this, but does anybody from the audience want to talk about the Molasses Hill project?
I don't know if the fence is even in a buffer zone or in the wetland or what area the fence is in. I mean, I can see the fence, it's obvious, but I need a wetland scientist or a third party reviewer to kind of tell me where the fence is. And that's also something I wanna bring up really quick is a third party reviewer. If the applicant is willing to comply, I think that it should go to a third party engineer. I don't think that we should be relying off of the applicant's engineer basis. I think that we should go to a neutral third party. It is on the applicant to pay. Okay. But yeah, I think that we should go to a third party engineer and kind of go that route. Someone neutral that hasn't seen the project and see Neutral sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. <coughs> so really, but it's getting him to comply with the enforcement order first and kind of seeing the next steps. That's fine. I just have a question, Sarah. Um, yes. You mentioned um, that the lawyer said that um, it was a dissolved corporation, but you weren't required to check it out, which I understand that you don't, you assume every application is valid. But when someone points out that the corporation is dissolved by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and cannot do business or fill out any applications in the state, that is a voidable contract. It doesn't make it void, but the other party is allowed to void it, which is you people. Yes. Um, and so he, can't, he can't, until he's done everything, he can't go, you can't go forward with this. I am going to say if I was not at the meeting, but at the time of when it was brought up of whether or not the company was dissolved, yes, the commission had the right to say, out of my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, that the commission had the opportunity to say no, he needed to get into good standing and then they, he could come back as an applicant. Is that, that was my understanding from KP Law as well. Um, but the issue, I guess, was that there is an, only a 10-day appeal period. So even if the, so the legal ad, for instance, was four days instead of five days. Uh, Ms. Reynolds had some other issues regarding the project. So she only had 10 days to do the appeal. Whether or not she had an appeal or not, that's not for me to say, but she only had the 10 days from when the project was approved to appeal the project. So she is out of her 10 day appeal period. So that appeal period is only for the DEP. Um, this corporation is still dissolved and it's illegal in the Commonwealth to do business. So at that point, you still have to go and look at your application, even though the DEP doesn't void it, and say this is not a valid corporation. So, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding, understanding from KP was that no, we could not revoke the RDA, and that's why I kind of went into, since we can't revoke the RDA and he's not doing the work according to plan, what can we do? And that's why I kind of asked the question about an enforcement order and whether or not can we make the applicant file a notice of intent? Like what are our next steps going forward? If we can't go backwards and correct the RDA, what steps can we do going forward to make sure that the work and everything going forward is up to the boards? Yeah, that's really just exactly what we have to do. We, 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 we can't really change what's been done. Um, there are certain instances where we might be able to uh, rescind that, uh, that determination. But to be honest, in order to do that would uh, possibly cause some, some major difficulties. Um, so we're looking at other avenues to make sure that this project is uh, compliant with Wellness Protection Act and, and our town bylaws. So that, that's the way we're working from right now. Um, that's why we consulted with KP Law as well as consulting with um, the DEP at this point.
question is that you're saying you're going with this enforcement order because the applicant did not provide any engineer plans, and that's the basis of you going forward with it because you have no plans to look at, correct? Well, I did not say engineer plan, but yes, I am going off the basis that, one, he did not give me a plan. He could have literally printed out, went on Google Earth, printed out his project, you know, the acreage, you know, the picture, the Google Earth picture, got a highlighter, and literally highlighted in where the hell the driveway was going to go. That at least would have given him something on paper saying that he, this is where the driveway is going to go. Sure, I the delineation doesn't, it delineates the wetland, but it doesn't say the driveway is going here. Okay, so can I ask Mr. Mess a question, because you weren't here for that meeting. Was there engineer plans for this project? Big blueprints, two by feet, two feet by three feet? There were some plans. But then, so my question is, where are they? Because they're not on file. They're not online. They weren't posted online. They're not on file with the all boards clerk. I've asked the town administrator. I've asked the DEP. I've asked everybody where the, where the approved plans are. And if there are approved plans, then I will gladly look at them. That will help us out, actually. So, yes, I would like to see the plan that apparently was here. And I don't know, I wasn't at the meeting, but that's only, my one, that's only one of my concerns. And if there was an approved plan, then I would say based off of that approved plan, was the slope supposed to be worked on? And, and, and even so, within that plan, um, it, not even the slope, but in, in the scope of where that buffer zone is, um, has work actually been done there? Have vehicles been stored there? There's a lot of different regulations that we're, we're not complied with, uh, allegedly. So th those are the questions that we have with this. And, and, and those, that's why we were looking for the as-built. Um, so the as-built versus the actual work that's done. Um, regardless of the plan. So if, if we actually see that there's work done in, in the buffer zone, that's that's probably one of the major concern, concerns of, of the infringement on that resource area. And I'm going to be honest also to another point, like it just says driveway. So if he did clear cut the slope, like that was not in the RDA, that was not in, de described in the work. So it's, it's, and I hate to do this to Mr. Curtis, but to be honest, it's just like, 101 Weber Road like he did the work without knowing about the Wetlands Protection Act and you know we made him file an RDA we made him go through the wetland delineation we made sure that he was compliant with the Wetlands Protection Act so you know he, that was somebody that did the work and didn't know what they were doing and did what they needed to do and was compliant and and we didn't make him do an engineered plan either we made you know so Going back to, yeah, I just want to see the approved plan and make sure that our duty is correct and we have all our T's crossed and all our I's dotted. Anything else, Bill? No, I, I, I think we've kind of beaten this issue to death at this point, so I think we should I probably move on. All right, are you all set? All right, moving on. Number seven, 158 Fiskdale Road Enforcement Order. I'm going to make this short and simple. The new highway superintendent reached out to me when I was at the town hall and said that he got a complaint about 158 Fiskdale Road. When they cut into, there's a huge slope. I don't know if you want to drive by, but I'm waiting for the to get comment from the DEP on how I should word the enforcement order. Um, but they cut into a slope. I guess there's a lot of runoff and erosion coming off of the property. Um, so I'm waiting to hear the language from the DEP on how to word it, but I'm assuming our first steps would just seeing, upon doing the enforcement order and having them get it delineated and see if they're even in a wetland or in a buffer zone and just having them maybe put up a silt fence and some waddles in the meantime until they can do the delineation. But again, I am waiting. Do, do we see well on GIS? Yeah, I looked at it on GIS, and it looks like there's a wetland possibly. I know there's a wetland across the street. Um, but now that we have a complaint, and even the highway superintendent has some concerns, 
especially stormwater concerns. Um, Who is the highway superintendent? Uh, no worries. So no, no, none of us know. I don't know. Name it's yet. Pete something. Okay. I don't know. He's brand new. <coughs> Pete, Pete, new guy. Pete, okay. new guy. I think his name is Pete. I don't even know. It is Pete. It is Pete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know his last name, but he came from another town. Okay. That's all I know. So I'm kind of working with him, kind of working with the DEP, just to get it delineated, kind of take those steps and kind of see where we are with that. So that'll be a to-be-continued situation. Okay. All right. So, so no vote on this one right now? No. I haven't okay. issued it yet. I haven't done anything. I, I don't want to put language in there if I'm not right, so I'm waiting so I get okay. the right language. Do we have contact with the actual property owner to see if we can actually access property to a site visit, or is it good enough to do it from the road? No, that's a part of what I need to do. I need to find out who owns it. I need to get with Mike Siri, find out contact information, and kind of have a conversation with them first and see what's going on there. Okay. Thank you. It's on my, it's on my list, I promise. Thank you. Uh, number eight is 30 Allen Road. Uh, I haven't issued it yet, but I can show you a picture on my phone. Nick Tomo called me, sent me a picture. There's a tree. Uh, oh, my phone's on 1% bill. Uh, Mine is too. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to make this quick. Um, Do we have a charger? Because that's our connection to bill, isn't I know. It? It's our connection to bill. I don't have a charger. I don't have a charger. I definitely do not. Jesus. All right. Um, Jacob, do you have an iPhone charger? Yeah. Well, if it's a dead tree, could we consider them both emergencies? Or yeah, both, yeah, I think we, we should. Can do both. Yeah. yeah. If you had one that's yeah, fallen okay in and the other one's in danger. I'm okay yeah. with doing both. Yeah, but yeah. I think this one's like, yeah, yeah. literally in if the water. If the other one's in danger of doing the same as that. That one? Yeah. And this one's pretty close to the water, too. And this one, one looks stone. like there's some sort of stone to there. Yeah. yeah. Some some sort of wall, so I don't want the wall to go either. Yeah. The tree goes. Yeah. So, but the tree already the tree already fell down. Oh yeah, the tree like. The is first tree up. is down. The second tree is in danger. Yeah. In the water. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna. No. No, it becomes habitat. I mean, honestly, the trees fall down all the time. So. Um, well, I don't know. I would say he needs to get it out of the water. Yeah. Mommy, send it to you. No, I, I, I trust that um, it, it's it's a perspective thing and what, what um, we want to do. And, um, which, I'm, I'm sorry, i got to look at the address. I can't see it right now. Where is this at? 30 Allen Road. And what, what, what body of water are we talking about? South Pond. Yep. So that's not under normal jurisdiction, so we don't want to move on this too quickly because that's a great pond. And that falls under a whole different set of rules. All right, so you want to so, wait? No, yeah, not not wait long. We don't want to keep the, the 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 owner of the property waiting too long. But we definitely do need to uh, make sure we're following the right set of regulations around this. All right. If that makes sense. So yeah, it, 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 and if we look at the the regulations around great ponds, there's a whole whole different set of rules. So. That's up to you. And yeah, if you want to wait, we can wait. I can look into it, and then we can schedule a meeting. Um, I mean, that, I mean, it's up to you. If, if you guys want to offer it up and vote on it, I mean, I that, that's great. I mean, I probably wouldn't vote for it knowing what I know, but if you guys think it's appropriate, maybe that's within our purview to do that. So. All right. 
second. So I guess I'm going to ask for a motion to approve an emergency order for 30 Allen Road to rem just remove the two trees. I'd like to make a motion to remove the two trees at 30 Allen Road. I second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll stand. Okay. Number nine, discussion of implementing different policies. We kind of went over that basically, yeah. talking about KP. Yeah, I'm going to uh, look into doing one or two a meeting. Um, a tree removal policy is one of, one of the policies. Sounds good. <laughs> is one of the policies just so we have something to rely on, like I said. Uh, and number 10, bylaw discussion. Kind of go into topic again, but just to re say it. If it's something that we want to do, I'll look into it. I looked into Acton, I looked into Sturbridge a little bit, I looked into Spencer. So I'll just get some ideas and. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, kind of look into what, it and what, kind of see. What I would like to do with the bylaws, if you could find, uh, uh, if you could form a subcommittee and bring a couple people not on the commission to help out with that, to finalize that before we present it to the town meeting. I, I would really like to go with that that route. Yeah, that's a good idea too. To definitely, yeah, to do. I mean, we can have a conversation with Ron and see how we can do a subcommittee and kind of go that route too. And yeah, it, it, it's a lot of work to re to redo a bylaw. Yeah. So, yeah when, when is our due date for this fall? Uh, for fall? No, it's not fall. It would yeah. be next June. Oh, it's next June. So next June, okay. Yeah, so we have time. Yeah. yeah. It can't be voted at a special. It has to be in an annual. So fall is special, so it can't be till June. Okay. And then, so we have plenty of time to work on it. Yeah, so I'll look into it. We can have a conversation with Ron, and then we'll go from there. All right, number 11, citizens' input. Anybody else? Oh, not on this. Does it have to be on this? No, no, no. Just it can be anything. Right. I would like the meeting, uh, the minutes for the meeting on uh, May 15th. Um, I contacted the all boards clerk and he said they haven't been made available for him to transcribe. Yes. Um, and so I've been waiting to finish up my open meeting law complaint with the attorney general and wanted the minutes. I have, Chris has not received the video as far Chris as the I clerk. Know. Yeah, Chris the clerk, about. yes, has not received the video yet as far as I know or the taping. He has not, so that he has not done the minutes yet. As soon as I at least have a draft from him, I told him to send it to you at least a draft and just state at the top that it is a draft. It is not approved yet by the board. Um, so we were, are working on that. If I cannot get the video, I know a couple private citizens tape the meeting. So my next bet would be asking them if they can give Chris, the all boards clerk, their video so that way he can do the meeting minutes. No, it is not audio. So we are not audio taped. Well, we are, but not. So Chris, the all boards clerk, does not have the audio tape either. So he has neither. So he has nothing. That may be some for us to talk about for one of our new policies too. So. Yeah. Yes, because I was talking to somebody in town, and they were under the impression that the planning board recorder was for the all boards clerk position and it was meant to record all three boards like planning zoning and conservation commission so like we have the recorder already chris has it so it's just yeah. about making sure that we can set it up and that it's actually being recorded yeah and, and and honestly it is a lot easier to compress an audio file than one of these big video files so yes. even if we had to do that going forward we could use a smart device and do it so <laughs> But I think, you know, we have to find a better better way to do that going forward. Yes, I agree. Uh, all right, anything else? All right, number 12 is financials. I'm skipping it. I sent out the enforcement order because, oh, the postage. I sent out the enforcement order. Chris, the all boards clerk, has my reimbursement form and the MACC annual dues invoice. So they're locked in the office, so I can't grab them. So okay. Okay. we'll wait. Okay. And correspondence, Table I have nothing. Way. Approval of minutes, I have no minutes. 15, board member comments. Nobody else has any comments. I don't have 
concerns, questions? Will our new cable access take care of some of the, will the clerk be able to get off of that so he can do the minutes off of that? Yeah, for tonight's meeting, yes. So from now forward, it's gonna be a little bit more straightforward instead of? I don't know, because Jacob's here tonight new. So I don't know if he's we'll, gonna we'll, be we'll here Chris. every meeting. We'll yeah, that's something Chris. that we're gonna have to talk to Ron and see if the okay. meetings are gonna be recorded in live going forward or not. Yep. So. TBD, to be determined. Sounds good. All right. Any other business? All right. I will. Motion, motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. Second. All in uh, discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Bill.